Okay, we are working with the Relay Sim Pro by Ditex. Uh, I am going to demonstrate every possible faulty circuit on a four pin relay. Five pin relays are similar, so uh, I'm not gonna waste my time doing that, but it'll make sense to you when we're all done with this video. First thing I wanna go over, just in case anybody doesn't know, pin 30 is your feed for the load side of the relay. 87 goes to your load. 86 is the feed for the control. 85 is your ground for the control. So that activates this, the control side of the relay that pulls the switch closed and allows voltage and current to flow to the load. So we're gonna show it with everything working and then we're gonna create faults and demonstrate what the tool looks like in each fault uh, so if there's a problem. So that way, if you see something you're unsure of, you can reference this video and get an idea of where your fault lies if you don't know what good looks like. Uh, otherwise, if you have a basic understand or the understanding of basic electrical circuits and the voltages you would expect to see in any given situation, uh, this will all make perfect sense to you pretty quickly. Okay, so I do have this all set up already. The red wire coming in here on pin 30 on the universal harness is the feed. And you can see, if you don't have voltage on your feed, the tool will not power up. Uh, the LED will still power up there, but uh, the rest of the tool doesn't power up. So we're gonna connect our feed. And we do have our ground hooked up to the ground on our battery uh, that's over here. Uh, so we have our ground hooked up, we have our feed hooked up, the tool powers up. We can go over to pin 30 and you can see we have battery voltage and we have no current flowing because the switch is off. So this is good. You can see that we have a fault on 87A because we don't have 87A hooked to anything. So this is what good looks like. So now if we want to go to 87, which goes to our headlamp, we have zero volts and zero current flow and we have no fault light. So now if I turn the switch on with no issues, you can see we have control on 86. So we have a feed here on 86 for our control. We know we have a good ground on our control because this light's lit. When this switch is on, we know we have power out we can see we have voltage on 87. We can see we have 4.4 amps of current going through this headlamp. So this is everything working properly. So, and again, if we wanna check our voltage on pin 86, you can see we have 13 volts on pin 86 and we have zero volts on pin 85. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a fault on the control side so you can see what happens because chances are you're going to hook this up and if you don't already have your control active you might see something weird so i want to show you what that looks like and then we'll show you faults on the load side so on the control side right now we have a feed on 86 and we know we have a ground on 85. if i take the ground off of 85 the light goes away but you can see our voltage on pin 85 goes up and we go to 86, because we still have a feed. Our voltage on 86 is battery voltage. If we go to 85, we have voltage here and no light. So we know we're missing that ground on 85. So I reconnect it, the light comes on, the voltage goes away. Now, let's make sure you can see that good. So you can see the voltage goes away when I plug that in. There's 11 volts, plug it in, voltage goes to zero. Try to get that to stay upright a little better. So now I know, because this light's on and I've got voltage on 86 and no volts on 85, I know I have a good ground because that light's lit. Now I did put an amp clamp over this circuit 
and it pulls less than five milliamps through here to turn this light on. So even though this is good to verify whether you have control or not, if you're load testing these circuits to make sure it'll carry say 150 milliamps that uh, it takes to cycle a relay on, this may trick you. It may give you the information you need, but it may not be enough current to actually pull that voltage low if you have a partially uh, open wire or a bad connection that may, might be allowing that to, or like a high resistance point that would allow that voltage to get pulled low. So that's one kind of caveat of the tool, and it's more than likely designed that way to be extremely careful around computer circuits, the last thing you want to do is put too much current through a computer circuit. So I would actually rather have this tool not load the circuit to say 300 milliamps or even 150 if you have a really sensitive computer circuit that's maybe only designed to cycle a solid state relay at 50 milliamps and you put 150 milliamps through it, you may cause damage. So this tool basically lights this light, verifies control <clears throat> using a very, very small amount of current that uh, my amp clamp wouldn't even pick up. So I know it's less than 10 milliamps, probably less than 5 milliamps. Uh, I don't have a super low amp clamp to, to verify and I'm not going to hook a meter in line or anything like that. So um, we can assume it's just a, a very, very small amount of current that's going to be safe for literally any computer circuit. So you you may get tricked if you have a very unique condition like that. I would suggest testing with the appropriate test light after verifying the amount of current it takes to cycle that relay on on the control side of the relay. Um, that being said, let's continue on to creating another fault. So we're going to go ahead and remove the feed from 86. And you can see the light comes off. I still have zero volts on 85 but I also have zero volts on 86. <clears throat> so I know I don't have any feed voltage on 85 or 86, and that's what I need to do is go figure out where I'm missing my feed or make sure the control is, to is told to come on. So you can see when that's connected. Now, some vehicles, they actually have these reverse polarity, and you can see if you reverse polarity, the red 85 light comes on, and uh, same thing, it just reverses everything. So the red light comes on, so I know I have feed and ground to my control, and I can verify that by going, okay, I have battery voltage on 85, I have zero volts on 86. Now if I pull my ground off 86, it acts the same way. And I notice this light lights just a little bit, um, but you can see it's much dimmer than it should be, but I have battery, and I have voltage there on 86, so I know my ground's floating, and I have battery voltage on a feed on 85. And I can verify that it's battery voltage by turning it over to 30 and going, I got 13.6, 13.6. So I'm, I'm very confident that I have battery voltage there. That's definitely my feed. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that back in, and I got a nice bright light, and then 86 is zero. 85 has battery voltage. So you could easily verify those circuits whether it's reverse polarity or not. So we're going to hook that back up normally. So we know that's feed on 86, ground on 85 because I have zero volts and the light's lit. So now that we've hammered that to death, uh, we're going to go ahead and go on to the load side. So you can see right now we have zero volts on pin 87 because the switch is off, our load's off. We have zero volts and zero current. Now, if I just remove my ground from my component, my fault light comes on. Uh, I know my fault light's on and I have voltage here on 87. So that's a floating ground making that fault light come on. <clears throat> and again, it's a very small amount of current that it takes to make the fault light go off, <clears throat> excuse me, makes the fault light go off with just a very small amount of current. So you can see I just barely touch that back on and the fault light shuts off and my voltage goes to zero. And that's the same if I remove the feed to my load or my component. Same thing, any open 
If there is no path to ground on pin 87, you're gonna have voltage there and you're gonna have a fault light. And you can see, as soon as you do have a path to ground, your fault light goes away and your voltage goes away. So if you have an open there and you wiggle in this harness, you might see this light flicker and you might see the voltage drop to ground as you make a partial connection. So that makes finding what the problem is really quick. Um, so now I want to demonstrate, I will quickly demonstrate the fault protection uh, even though I don't want to, uh, but let's make sure that works. So right now everything's hooked up, everything's normal. I do want to show you quick if I have an open here and a fault light and I have voltage here. I don't have battery voltage which I can confirm by looking at 30. I have 13.6 for battery voltage and I have 11.8 here so I know I have a floating ground and that's what's keeping my fault light on. So I'm pretty confident I don't have a short to battery voltage or it would match pin 30. Uh, so then when I cycle this on I do get battery voltage and the green light looks the same but I have no current flow. So I know I still either have an open or I have a component that's not operating. So when I shut that off, you can see it goes back to that floating ground voltage. When I plug this in, it goes back to zero volts. So that's, that's important to understand what's going on there so you can quickly identify your faults. So now when I turn this on and everything's working normally, I get what's close to battery voltage and I get current flow. Now this uses a, an internal shunt to calculate current flow. So you are gonna see a volt or so of voltage drop on a loaded circuit and that's perfectly acceptable because it's the tool creating the voltage drop in order to calculate your current flow or your amperage reading. Uh, and so when, you can see when I shut that off the voltage goes away. We have 12.9. We turn that on. Well I guess we really don't. We got 12.5 there and we're losing about 600 millivolts through the tool at a four amp load. Uh, and that's gonna vary. You're gonna have more voltage drop the higher the current goes. But uh, just be aware that, you know, that voltage drop you're seeing is normal. That's built into the tool. Uh, there's a diagram in the manual, you know, sh demonstrating where they put the shunt that creates the voltage drop. But we're gonna go ahead and shut that off now. And then we're gonna simulate the fault, the uh, short to uh, ground. So we're just gonna connect these two right together. So now we know we have a short to ground. And you can see we have battery voltage. We still have zero volts here, no fault light, because we have a short to ground, but it's gonna pull that voltage low. So there won't be a fault light until we turn it on. You can see we turn it on, we get both lights, green and red. We have a fault and you can see our current maxes out at the limit and then it's actually going to drop the voltage. So it probably it went into thermal protection. Yeah, it's not going to, it, it cuts it off pretty quick. You know, obviously, if you turn that on and you see those lights, don't cook your, your tool, just shut it off because you know you have a short to ground. Uh, and you probably knew that before because pin 30, if you had a standard relay in there, pin 30's feed would have likely blown the fuse if you had a short to ground. So uh, you can see again what that looks like. I'm gonna do it really quickly. Turn that on. You can see it's pulling current and it drops the voltage right off. So you know it's not gonna let you do that. The tool gets, doesn't really get very warm but it does have plenty of vents so it's gonna cool off pretty quickly. But uh, again, try to have some uh, you know common sense and try not to overload your tool so you can see again it's open fault lights on as we hook this back to the the load or our light here you can see as soon as we create a path to ground our uh, fault lights shut off our voltage goes away and you can see here when you take that off our voltage goes up you connect it the voltage goes away on 87 and our fault light goes away. And then we're gonna turn it back on. And you can see we have voltage on 87. We have current flow, our fault lights off, just the green lights on. So, all right, so I'm done with the demonstration. Uh, 
that's about every way you could create a fault and find it with just this one tool. We didn't have to break out any other tools, any other measuring devices, just one tool, ten, you know, less than 10 minutes worth of work and uh, your, your fault is isolated to whatever circuit and then you can focus on just that circuit without wasting a bunch of time trying to get there. So thanks for watching.